Oh, look! It's 2018! Time to list the plans for the current year, then. Hello everyone and welcome to the year 2018 Anno Domini or the current year plus 3 Anno Trudeau. <laughs> I hope you had a great new year party and wish you all a great year because if you're doing great, I'm doing great too. This operation would not be possible without all of you out there doing great. Alright, so as it is customary now on this channel, the January 1st video is for laying out what to expect for the current year in broad terms. Now last year I promised I'll show you four capital cities and a few other interesting locations. I somewhat exceeded that with the Christmas video which also showed some footage from Bucharest thus making it the fifth capital city that made it into Freedom Alternative videos after Stockholm, Budapest, Tbilisi and Yerevan. And I say this with the hope that I did manage to publish the Yerevan video in due time. <laughs> I mean, that video was remarkably hard to make for some reason. Alright, also last year I promised to do more practical politics videos and a significant increase in the technical quality of the videos, which I also delivered. The latter part would not have been possible without your continuous and generous support, for which I am grateful and I hope you'll support this in 2018 as well. For this year, there are two separate lists of promises. One is the will definitely do list and the second is might do, it depends list. So let's look at the first list in the order of their certainty. The first item, and by far the most certain, is that this year Freedom Alternative is going to the United States for a few weeks. Now, I know for sure well, I go, I know when I get back, I know where I'll stay and all of that. So if you're from Chicago or DC area, do drop me a line and maybe we can arrange something. Of course, as usual, I won't reveal all the dates here before uh, and, uh, and this is both for discretion and safety reasons. And since this is not a trip funded by, by public fundraiser, none of the details shall be public. With that said, in addition to expanding the network of people in this operation, this trip will of course produce new content uh, of which you will likely won't see on other channels. I mean, this is and has always been the purpose of all of these travel videos, to bring something that genuinely doesn't appear anywhere else. On the menu for this trip are several interviews with uh, uh, survivors of communism and also two surprise in-person interviews with two other YouTubers, and that's all I will reveal for now because the plans aren't entirely ironed out on this aspect, so I wouldn't want to promise something late that later on I find out that I can't deliver. Second item on the agenda is another tour similar to the one in Ukraine in 2016 and the one in Hungary, Georgia and Armenia in 2017. This year, we're going to Jordan and Israel. The plan is to fly from here to Amman via Bucharest and then go by car around there, cross the border into Israel, also by car or bus, show you Jerusalem, preferably all of the sectors, and then go to Tel Aviv, which is not a particularly impressive city, but it's fantastic for networking purposes, and then fly from there back to my hometown. More details on that towards the end of this month or early in February at the latest, since this one will be funded mostly by you. It will come to with full de details on everything, except exact dates, of course, and will also be subjected to minimum viability support, just like the Georgia-Armenia tour was when I announced in late March that it had reached the minimum threshold and it was thus going forward. So basically, there may be, if the minimum threshold is not um, uh, reached, it won't happen. Anyway, more on that when I publish the e-begging video. And yes, I will require literal shekels for this one. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Third item on the list, the Romanian language channel. 
Last year I promised that I'll make it a more important feature of the operation in the fourth trimester of 2017, which I did. In addition to the weekly podcasts, we also got more interviews with interesting people, more on-the-ground coverage from various events, including controversial ones, and even a bit of local investigative journalism, as you've seen, for instance, in April when we went to Dej to investigate and eventually demolish the narrative that the cathedral media had circumscribed on the local politics of the area. I intend to continue in that direction now that we have the technical means to produce that kind of content. I mean, it's amazing how much progress happened particularly on that channel. Still, if you do follow that channel, please do consider supporting it more. There are many things I chose not to do for that channel purely for economic reasons. I mean, I can't just use the general funds or the shekels for this channel to fund the activities on that channel. It would be unfair for the supporters of the English language channel for me to use their donations to produce content that they can't understand. And no, subtitling long interviews and podcasts is not an option. Subtitling takes a lot of work that falls exclusively on me. And since this channel is not my main job or source of income, there's no way I can subtitle like a maniac and still make ends meet. Not for now, anyway. All right, fourth item on the agenda, detailed instructions. Now, although we come a long way in terms of practical politics videos, I have not yet delved into highly specific and detailed instructions, and that wasn't by accident. Providing highly detailed instructions would have jeopardized the ongoing operations. As many of you know, this channel is just the front of a much larger operation in which we do practice what we preach. Right now, there are four different subversion operations ongoing in three countries of Europe that are directly connected to the activity on this channel. In addition to that, we also do provide consultancy for like-minded people who want to do this in their own communities as well. With that said, some of the older projects are due to finish this year, which means I'll have more data on how things can and do go if enough agitprop is being applied, and with new experience, it will be easier to prepare future projects. This means I'll be able to share details that can no longer jeopardize current projects alongside with the experience that we gathered in applying the theory. This is basically an extension of the pledge that I made last year, teaching as many po people as possible on how to forward the goals of liberty during our lifetimes. Because poking fun at leftists is easy, explaining why social justice is cancer is also easy. Actually subverting the institutions and eroding the power of social justice? Well, that's not that easy. But it's doable. And finally, fifth element on the agenda, the element that is more likely than not, the element that I'm not sure whether it should be on the maybe list or on this one, Albania. I have said several times in the past that if all Muslim majority countries would be like Albania, there would be no Islam problem. But to explain what do I mean by that is not that easy, not without showing you anyway. Basically, Albania is the only country in the world that had a state atheist regime that lasted until 1991. Not even the Soviet Union was officially state atheism. And before that, most of the time, Albania has been under Ottoman occupation, which also spread Islam into the place. The way modern-day Albania manages the religious affairs should be, in my opinion, a model for many other countries, particularly in the Middle East and North Africa. But to explain these things in a credible manner, I need to get there and show it to you. For instance, if I were to just tell you that conversion from Islam to Catholicism happens routinely and no one cares, it would be far less credible than if I were to tell you uh, that and show you a regular street in Tirana, Shkonde or Dures where no burqas are in sight and newly built Orthodox or Catholic churches via donations from Muslims are a common feature. And yes, I'm being very serious here. You see, even talking about basic stuff sounds unbelievable when it comes to Albania, particularly since several members of the Islamocritic community have made it a habit in sharing bullshit statistics that compare Albania with Saudi Arabia, when in reality these two places might as well be on different planets. Hence why I need to get there and show you around. Now, getting there is no longer difficult nor expensive. It used to take a 40 hours trip by bus and changing in three countries. Holy capitalism made it both cheap 
and fast. There's flights from Budapest at about $100 round trip, luggage included, so with about $400 I can pay for the entire trip and the accommodation for a week in Albania, so price is not an issue. The main hurdle will be time, though. Albania has a deeply unfriendly climate, and with the American trip and the Jordan-Israel tour already in the calendar, this leaves only two short time windows in which I can squeeze the Albanian trip into. Nevertheless, I really do want to do this, so take this as a 97% promise, <laughs> I guess. Of course, just because it's cheap on paper, it doesn't mean you shouldn't consider throwing a shekel for that endeavor too. Just saying. I believe a video series from Albania would benefit the Islamocritic sector quite a lot because it would provide argument uh, ammunition that things can and are being done differently. In terms of interreligious relations, most people can learn a thing or two about Albania. All right, now let's move to the might do, but it depends list. This one's a bit shorter. The first element on it, Sweden. As many of you might know, Sweden will be having a general election in early September of the current year. The general election takes place on September the 9th, which is by far the worst date possible for what I had in mind last year, when it has gotten into my head that I should cover this election from Sweden. Basically, it sort of overlaps with the Jordan-Israel tour, which I have it in mind to take place in late August and early September, just like the last tour happened. So at best, I could get back to Romania on September the 5th and go to Sweden right next day or something, so I can be there on election night and spend the night with members of the Sweden Democrats. Now, that would be one option. Another option would be to go later in the year after the elections and take post-election interviews, regardless of the results, since I would have to book the trip in advance before knowing who won. That would be much easier to do, time-wise, but it would also be slightly less exciting, unless I can fit uh, a trip to Malmö as well, in which case it would suddenly be very interesting. <laughs> The third and the least desirable option would be to go before the Jordan-Israel tour, which on, would on one hand come with a lot more grassroots coverage on how the campaign is going, but on the other hand would also miss the essential moments, i.e. the previous week or the previous two weeks before the election itself. And of course, there is also the fourth option, which is not to go at all, not a particularly great option, but something to consider, given the both time and financial constraints. Now, in addition to the time, as I said, there's also the cost factor. Last year, I funded the trip myself, provided the, and Paul provided me with a place to stay, and that was great. Even so, the trip was costly, and I didn't have enough funds to also go to Malmö, which was quite annoying, but hey, what can you do? So I'll put this to you. Do you want coverage from the Swedish elections? And if yes, what option would be best in your opinion? Also, would you be willing to pledge a few shekels specifically for that trip? Because from where I'm looking at the issue, it would not be a great tragedy if I don't go, but it would be a nice added bonus for 2018 if I did go and spread some good ideas over there. So, uh, you tell me. All right, the second and last element on this secondary list is local stuff. Now, I've been getting emails uh, throughout 2017 that I should be making more videos with cities or places from Romania. To that effect, I booked a trip to Ceausescu's palace later on this year, so I'll definitely show you some of the inside of that huge megalomaniac building in Bucharest. I also gathered throughout 2017 about two hours of street footage from my hometown, with a view to eventually make an exploring Cluj-Napoca video, but for some reason I find that very hard to make. And the same thing happened with Budapest. I mean, it's quite hard for me to make a serious video about a place that I never regarded as video material, but just a place I sometimes go. The same goes with Bucharest. So again, you tell me, do you really want more local stuff on this channel? I mean, the most attractive places in this country have already been covered ad nauseam on YouTube already. Same with the least attractive places, and the rest is boring, same like with any other country, really. So, from where I'm looking, the topic is no longer in the interesting category. 
With that said, if there will be demand, I will try to oblige, of course. I would appreciate if you would uh, place more specific requests, because otherwise I really don't know what is still interesting. I mean, other than the Victims of Communism Memorial in Sigeto Marmati, which I showed you back in 2016, there isn't much that has not already been thoroughly covered on YouTube and in English. But I could be wrong. So you tell me. Um, and I'll try to find uh, to fit something into the schedule for 2018. If not, and if not for this year, maybe for the next year. Just provide suggestions. So yeah, that's basically what to expect in 2018. In addition to the usual commentary on the news and some topic-specific topic research videos. Some of those are uh, coming up this month already. As a matter of fact, as soon as the effects of alcohol from the New Year, par New Year party wanes, that is. Now, um, a few more words on general policy, which I initially wanted to put in a separate video, but upon further consideration, maybe they'd be better fit here. So, first of all, I'm going to shrink my Facebook presence. Effective immediately, I will not be answering Facebook, uh, private Facebook messages anymore. A policy which is not hard to implement, since I rarely have the ability to do so, because Facebook keeps on suspending me for increasingly ludicrous reasons. For instance, at the moment of this recording, my main account is suspended for a parody of A Christmas Carol, a parody that I published in 2013, that is. My secondary account is suspended for a YouTube link to a Baptist choir singing about Jesus Christ's resurrection. I wish I were joking. My tertiary account is suspended for, some, uh, for mentioning that LGBTs scan into drama but then can't withstand the effects of that drama. And I said that in a private group. And it goes on and on like that for the last month, eight months or so. There comes a moment when enough is enough. So while the channel's page will remain active for the time being, everything else I used to do on Facebook is now defunct. If you want to contact me, my email address is in the About section of this channel. I also hang out on Twitter and Gab, so there are ways to get to me. Many of you also have my personal phone number, so there's that too. In other news, it turns out I was correct about uh, in being skeptical about VidMe and made a good choice not to go there. With that said, I am considering BitChute as a backup, so throughout the, the current year, I will consider back, backing up uh, at least some of the videos from here and put them on BitChute. Also, since Patreon is increasingly starting to suck ass and Bitcoin is costing too much per transaction, I did open an altcoin wallet in Litecoin and also activated a Bitcoin Cash wallet. Soon enough, I may enter Maker Support as well, which appears to be a nice alternative to Patreon, at least for now, not censorious and politically motivated. The point is that we need to diversify, and unlike last time I touched upon this topic, this time there are also better alternatives. So, we'll do that. Alright, so with all of that being said, I wish you all a happy new year. I hope we all have a, a, a great year, both in terms of politics and on personal level. Thank you all for your continuous and generous support throughout all of these years. If you derive any value from what's being posted here, please do consider, consider throwing a shekel for 2018. And um, I'll see you all very soon on Freedom Alternative. <laughs>